Coming in hot is presented by Botano. The game starts now. Here are your hosts, Brent Wallace, Jason York, and Bobby Ryan. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Brent Wallace alongside Jason York in the middle. And out on the west is Bobby Ryan, who uh, he deserves to get employee of the week this week, uh, Yorkie, because he got yeah. up uh, before 6 a.m. to join us and see our faces early in the morning. Yeah. I'm rocking two hours and 22 minutes based on my, my, <laughs> my uh, what's that, time in bed or whatever on uh, – on, on your phone so but i'm here because i'm here for the fans well <laughs> nice <laughs> man of the people yeah, the renfrew yeah. pro tape ad read ought to be very good today um yeah yeah so before we uh by the way mark borvietsky is going to join us in a bit um, before we get to that lots of discussion going on plenty of talk about alex to it has really certainly fired up a lot of fan reaction uh gentlemen when i ask you uh not surprised that there's a lot of reaction, but based on everything we're hearing, are we seeing the last game that Alex DeBrink gets played? Is he done? Are we going to see him move by the draft? I'd love to touch this subject, but this is a Yorkie thing. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a Yorkie thing from the get-go. I'm going to close the window for you guys. <laughs> I just, I'd, love to, I'd love to weigh in, boys, but I, I yeah, it's all Yorkie. No, that's, that's big you of you. Say- you never say never, but um, you know I'll, I'll 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 say a quote that I probably shouldn't say right now in Ottawa. When there's smoke, there's fire. Oh yeah. <laughs> a, hey Bobby, it is so smoky is right now in the city. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. I, I feel like I've sm- smoked about uh, two packs of darts. It's uh, yeah. It's, it's really bad. It's yeah. so it's, we, it's, we it's, get it out here. It's usually August out here when we get it from the BC fires coming down in Idaho. So it's it's. But I know what you guys mean you can't take the kids outside. It's horrible for them. It's yeah. uh, the worst air quality in Canada at the moment. And there's so there's a fire up in Calabogie, but there's also 150 wildfires going yep. on right now in Quebec. And so uh, wow. you can see it in the smoke is all the way down to New York City. There was a picture the other day posted of no just way. how bad. Anyway, so yeah. to all those people. Uh, Please be safe. Uh, it is. Yeah. It's a scary, scary time. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, answer so you the question. Be, answer yeah. the question. I would say yes. Um, and it, all, all I can look at right now is if if the player really wanted to re-sign here, I think there would have been because you always see this from guys, especially you know we go back to that end of the year discussion. You can tell when a guy really wants to come back. And t- a couple of things here. Number one. I think if I'm Alex to I want to go somewhere else because I can go somewhere else and be on their first line. I can go somewhere yeah. else and they're not going to, they're not going to blink about paying me about making me one of the highest paid players on the team where in Ottawa, it's like, well, we're already paying Brady. We're already paying Stutzla. Um, so, Hey, the guy's got two forty goal seasons and everybody, everybody thinks that, for whatever reason, maybe on this show we're talking, we're not talking badly about the player. He's a really good player. There's just there's just certain fits for certain players on teams. And for Debrinket, I just don't think it's a good fit here in Ottawa because number one for the team, number two for the player. Like, don't forget, and I think one thing yeah. we've all learned here about sports and business, hey, pay attention, it just went on with the PGA tour. Players have to look out for themselves, and there's a lesson Absolutely. right there with the PGA Tour. So, I, I I think that right there is another lesson, and he's going to go where he's going to get paid the most money and has the best opportunity to showcase and do what he does throughout his career, and that's score goals. So he's going to be on a first yeah. line on another team. He's never going to be the first line winger. Left winger on the offside, Brady is always going to be that guy. So if I'm Alex Dabrinkit, why would I want to sign to be a second line player? I have two 40 goal seasons, and that's the thing people need to get their head around. Not only is it the Sens, it's it's the player too. He has to think about what's best for his future, what's best for his long term financial earning. And if I'm Alex Dabrinkit, it's probably not Ottawa. All right, but but here's I got to throw a wrinkle in this. Well, Claude Giroux only has two years left on his deal, and we all he's not getting any all that stuff. 
So you're going to have to replace Claude Giroux and Alex Dabrinkit in the next couple of years? It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's not It's not going to be the team's decision. It's going to be the player's decision. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. And that's so, what people have to understand. Like, it's the player's decision here. As much as everybody wants him to stay here, if I'm Alex Dabrinkit, I'm going elsewhere. I am. It's just plain. I am too. And And you know what? Here's what I'll say if I'm Pierre Dorian. We have the standard. And this, nobody's making more than our captain and our best player in Tim. Nobody's making more than those guys. Here's that, That's the bar. The bar is set. Josh Norris is locked in at whatever he's locked in. At. I think it's eight, right? We have our captain is making this much. Our best player is making this much. Nobody is coming in to make more than those players. It's kind of like Detroit for all those years said, our captain is Nick Lidstrom. He makes 6.5 and nobody's making more than him. And that's – but- yeah. Sure, and, I, I, and I get Wally, that, but let me put Wally. it to you. Hold on. They got to sign Jake Sanderson. Yeah. So if he signed – now he won't because he's out of his entry-level deal. But if there was somebody that comes in and signs for more money than Tim or Brady, it happens, right? Because as the as you get further down the road, the cap goes up and players who arguably aren't the best players on the team still get paid more money because that at the time is what they're worth. Yeah. Understand my I, point? I, so, I don't see it ha- – yeah, but I don't see it happening in Ottawa. I don't – because – you're not, I mean, unless you're going out and getting a $10 million player in Austin Matthews okay. or whatever, you're not, you have a standard now. You have, you have the bar set with your best two players, Shabbat at, you know, arguably three, and then Sanderson's going to make what he's going to make off the entry level contract. You have your guys set, and that's, that should be the standard going forward. So you should be going to a guy that you're saying, hey, you're our second line left winger. We're not giving you 8.5. That's why I think the Brain Cats played his last game. And that's I, I actually I love the player. I think he's a great player. Oh. I think he's great on I think he's great on the power play. I think he's great, but so I think that okay. you have to tell him you're not making more than those guys. You're just not. Then what keeps Alex Debrinkit in Ottawa? We've all established that he's a great hockey player. Is there any way that he stays in Ottawa? Does it have to be a number? Does it have to be below eight? And would you do it? Well, well now you're gonna be a cap. Now you're going to be a cap team. So, you, uh, man, he, I mean, six, seven, I don't know. Well, no, he's, yeah. He's, so he's not doing that. There's no chance. So, no, Wally, here's the nowhere. thing. Here's here's the thing, too. And, like, number one, uh, people might criticize the deal. I still think the deal was important for the city because if we go back to last summer, the buzz that was created yep. within the fan base to, re, to re-engage the fan base to say, hey, we're going out and getting players now. I think that was really important. And I, I actually think the trade, a lot of the reasoning behind that trade was to do that, to go out and show that you're still a major player in the market, get the asset, you still have the asset, you're still going to get something for him. You're still going to get a lot back for Alex to bring it. And here's the yeah. other thing. I, I truly believe this on players. If you're going to make a guy your highest paid player, he has to make the guys around him better. You can never have the discussion of, well, Wait till, he, wait till you see what he does this year because he had Pinto as a center and he never really had a line. You can't say that about guys that are going to be your highest paid player. If you're having yeah. that conversation, then you've just answered your question of can I make this guy our highest paid player? You can't. Right. Yeah, the, the, I agree. Like, you can't do it. And, and that's the thing. And it's no disrespect against the player. He is a goal scorer. He's great on the power play. All the things Bob and I have been saying about him. He's a fantastic player. It's just a bad fit in Ottawa. It is. And I don't care what anybody says. You cannot make him your highest paid player. Hey, right. I, end this, end I, want story. Everybody, I want everybody to get paid. That's, uh, you know, I, I'm so do I. Player. Yeah. I want everybody to get paid. I want everybody to maximize their time in the league. But Alex Brinkett's going to do that somewhere else. That's That's my guess. Says the guy who signed the biggest deal in Sens franchise history at the time. <laughs> there you go. We got <laughs> proof of the pudding right here. That's we it, are yeah. going, every time you talk contracts, we're just going to have a sound effect of cha-ching. <laughs> <laughs> They're still paying me not to play. <laughs> I know. You, you, still, you did that that's so right, well. Eh? You're still yeah, on the payroll, more. aren't you? When are you off the yeah. when are you off the books, by the way? I got one more year. One more year yeah. of cash and checks. <laughs> <laughs> does it, it does it personally say signed by Pierre Dorian? Because that would be the best. That would be the best, but no, no, no. Oh, it's too That's bad. Uncle Huge, man. Like my, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right. Before uh I know Boros uh soon to join us. So let's get through uh our partner, uh Chats and uh 
we got a few to get through. So, Yorkie, you might have some time off here. But let's see how this goes. Okay. I deserve it. Uh, as always, our show proudly presented by Botano, uh, where you can uh, get in on all the action with the Stanley Cup final or, uh, by the way, the UFC fight that's coming up we'll get to in a sec. Uh, visit Botano.ca or download the app. Their award-winning app is state-of-the-art, fastest, most user-friendly and advanced betting app for your mobile or tablet. Have the amazing world of sports always with you at Botano. Hundreds of betting options for events and try same-game parlays with BetBuilder. Also, live in-game betting and the most competitive odds in the market. Botano, the game starts now. I don't know. It's now. Oh, there you go, Bobby. Is this me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, as always, our show is held together by Renford Pro, which is the original hockey tape. It is the one with the green core. It's the one that you find in every NHL locker room um, because the rest is just not even comparable because none of it's hand terrible, but Renfrew Pro. It is absolutely moisture resistant. It helps with puck control. It's what the pros use. You can find it at all major retailers or at RenfrewPro.com. You can give them a follow at Renfrew Pro on Instagram. Um, tag your teammates for unlimited entries. This is all for free tape Friday. Tag your teammates on unlimited entries. Share to your story for 10 actual bonus entries. Uh, and Renfrew Pro, feel the game. I do have to ask you guys a question after when we get to it, and that is uh, what color tape would you use if it wasn't white or black? Um, meanwhile, uh, for 35 years, BEI has built its reputation of providing great service and unmatched quality of work, and now the BEI team is putting forth the same commitment in building your new home. Escape the city and the big city price tags. Relocate to a new home in the Ren subdivision, a project by BEI Homes. Just one hour west of Canada, you can enjoy a vibrant small town atmosphere with all the modern conveniences. And Bobby needs a new house. Walking distance to the beachfront on Muskrat Lake. Uh, detached homes with 70 foot frontage and water and sewer. Uh, there's also semi detached homes with plenty of affordable options. Many options and floor plans to choose from with prices starting as low as $500,000. Trust a quality builder with seven year Terry and home warranty for peace of mind living. Visit bonishyourhomes.com. And boys, by the way, this Saturday, this Saturday at Rogers Place, 10 p.m. It's UFC uh, 289 taking place. And that's the uh, the huge Amanda Nunez, the lioness known as the greatest female UFC fighter of all time as she steps into the octagon to face Irene Aldana. Nunez, the first female to hold UFC titles in two divisions simultaneously, by the way. And meanwhile, in the men's main card, number one ranked Charles Oliveira taking on number four, Benil Darush in the men's lightweight bout. Uh, and one of the best rising stars, Canadian Mike Malouk, takes on Adam Fouguet in the welterweight division. The early prelims begin at 7 p.m. Eastern. The main bout's at 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern, only on pay-per-view. Go to welcome.ufcfightpass.com. Yorkie, you still there? I'm still oh, here. wait. I got one more. Because uh, I didn't give any of you scripts, so I have to read them all myself. Uh, this show is energized by Athletic Greens. Do you want a simple, easy way to take care of your body? Let me tell you about AG1 by Athletic Greens. It's the answer. Uh, it tastes great. It's like, think of pineapple and vanilla. Uh, 75 multiple vitamins and nutrients all inside this one simple little drink to take with water in the morning to get your day started. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and Five free travel packs with your purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash coming in hot. That's athleticgreens.com slash coming in hot. There. Nailed it. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> well, I'll be taking your Remind me to send you scripts later. Okay. Get on. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be sure to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't believe you're honest in that answer. Um <laughs> so all right, as we get into the draft. Uh, by the way, the sale has yet to be completed. Uh, is This seems to be a tough time for Ottawa as it has its hands tied trying to figure out how to navigate a sale, a coach perhaps, a GM perhaps, and still trying to do the draft, make deals, and sign players. Like That is a tough assignment to put onto Pierre Dorian regardless of yeah. uh, what we think of the job he's done. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, it's, I don't, I guess his hands are tied in a sense, right? Um, yeah, I, he's in, a, he's in, a, he's in a tough spot. He's in a tough spot, but you go into the draft and you, I think if you're Pierre Dorian, no matter who's coming in, you have the green light to make a trade for a guy that's 
you're losing 9 million bucks and hopefully you're getting a first round pick or whatever it might be. Um, so hands are tied, but I, I guess any, any owner that's coming in is going to say, Hey, no problem. You, you got 9 million bucks off the books. <laughs> that's a, that's how, not a big deal, right? <laughs> Good job. Like how different <laughs> is this summer compared to uh, the last, right? When you had the signings and you had your room, now you've like, it's just dull, flat, and people just kind of want it over. It's just, I think people are anxious. There's just, there's just a level yeah. of anticipation. There's a level of frustration right now that I sense in the city. People just want this to end. But I think as far as the management team goes and the scouts, it's business as usual. It has to be. It's, yeah. you just go about your daily business and you prepare for the draft. Um, Auto doesn't have as many picks this year, but what else can you do? You do your job. They're all being paid for what they're doing and, and you just go about your business and, and, and when the changes are made, you, you, uh, you know, your hands are tied. It's like you're a player playing in the last year, your deal. It's the same thing. And, and, uh, yeah, it's just, it sucks for everybody. Like I, you can feel like Bob here in Ottawa, anybody I talk to, it's the same thing. When is this going to get done? When is this going to get done? It's the biggest topic besides the, uh, the fires in, in auto right now. And people are just, it's almost to the point where people don't want to talk about it. It's, it's, it's been it's just so, <laughs> it's been so long. And now I'm to the point now where I don't think they're going to make an announcement till the playoffs are done. Cause they're not going to want to, right. you know, they'll probably wait and then introduce a new ownership group at the draft, the new groups at the draft. And you probably make a splash there. Batman announces them, introduces them at the draft and the new owners come up and make the first, pick that ottawa has in the draft so no I, I i see i see a scenario you, you say no chance of what no because i don't think it'll be finalized by then so they won't allow him to do that. oh man that would suck like that would that, that would be that would be perfect scenario wouldn't it okay but that's not how the league operates yeah. listen Let's we gotta check, move on check back in in august yeah we got we have the guy who <laughs> the guy who's played the eighth most games by a senator d-man in history five fewer the number seven, Jason York, who played yeah. 380. Uh, Mark Borvietsky, in your 375 games of Ottawa experience, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. I didn't realize I was that close to York. I should have grinded it out for another year. Just you should, <laughs> hey, Borrow, you should have. Hey, a couple of things Borrow and I have in common, by the way. Both Smith Falls Bears alumni. I forgot about that, Borrow. He's yeah, a couple years true. Ago, right? That's <laughs> the glory <laughs> days when I used to be cool, huh? <laughs> now, you're... now you're holding a baby on a podcast eh? yeah you guys, this is, I, I i am no longer like big hits getting hit with slap shots i'm uh yeah i'm um, i've moved past that stage of my life but on but before we get going i got to apologize to you guys and and to your viewers and listeners i've been a tough guy to pin down so um <laughs> I've, i had a lot going on between retirement we're selling our house here in Nashville, three kids, you know, getting that already. It's, it's been a mess here. So I appreciate you guys' patience. No, I appreciate you coming on. It's, uh, you're one of my favorites. Uh, enjoy the smile, uh, even with or without teeth. Uh, the, I, I'm going to ask how retirement life is going, but I can see that you're a full-time babysitter. Yeah, so we have three kids. We have uh, our oldest is three. So Miles is three, Lee, our daughter's one, and Devin here is 10 weeks. So we are... My Tara, uh, my wife Tara said to me, she's like, we are in the trenches right now. So we, uh, we've got three young ones, so we're busy. Are, um, uh, are your two youngest Irish twins? Uh, they're a year and two days apart. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're, 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 yeah, we've got some young kids in the house. So we are, <laughs> my, 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 my gray hair ratio is increasing daily. So <laughs> What, there's, What's no hair Irish the, twins? there's no hair. Irish <laughs> That's twins why I chop face. it off. <laughs> <laughs> um, Irish twins are, um, I guess, kids that are within the same year, but not twins. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, calendar year. Calendar, yeah. That's yeah. a first for me. Uh, yeah. So then I, sh I guess I shouldn't bring up like how you're enjoying retirement life. I guess it's uh, no, nonstop. Yeah, uh, it's 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 been nice. It's been a nice change, uh, and I'm sure Yorkie and Bobby can speak to this too. But like you know, for the past decade plus, well, more I mean more than that since I was playing D1. I mean, every decision in my life has been for me. You know, like uh, I think hockey. Unfortunately, sometimes you know it has to be a selfish profession. You know, you're going to be so dialed in on your sleep, your eating, your routines, your habits. 
you know, even on home game days, like you're not, you're not really like home, you know, you're home, but you're not really present or anything. So uh, to be able to kind of take a bit of a backseat here uh, to the kids in Terra, like it's, it's actually, I, I've, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. 12 years in the national hockey league, uh, 458 games. I have you down as 1831 hits. Oh, oh there, by the way, that's horrifying. Uh, that, that's uh, Mark Borfietsky <laughs> through the years. Uh, I did Maybe find a Clarkson headshot. Young. That was nice and squared off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, there's the Binghamton look. Uh, oh, and then uh, they had nice lighting for that headshot. And then that, that Binghamton one looks like a grade six yeah. grad picture or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so are you at the point yet where you miss it or is it still too early to miss the hockey? Um, you know, there, there's, there's definitely times where I miss it. Um, you know, I just, sorry, I've got a cooing baby here. There's a, there's, there's, you know, and this is I, a again, first. I'm sure these, I'm sure these two guys can speak to it. Like there's times where I don't miss it at all. And there's times where I really, really miss it with every bone in my body, you know? So it's, uh, it, it kind of comes and goes fleetingly, but, uh, for the most part, you know, I, I'm, I'm in a good place and, you know, the, the decision was kind of made for me based on injuries too. You know, I, I kind of had an idea that this is going to be my last year regardless, just, you know, three young kids. I was like, how do I balance this? I've had a good career. Maybe it's time to wrap it up. Um, and then that last concussion, it was just like, what am I doing? You know, 10 documented concussions, <laughs> something like that. Like couldn't be around the kids for a few weeks. I was like, this is just not right. So, yeah. So, so can we talk? I, I don't want to bring it up because I know I don't know how much you've watched that play. I, I don't know what you remember. Can you take me through your, uh, I guess, time or events, if you will? Uh, well, I, I'd actually, uh, I fought Delorie earlier too. It wasn't really much of a fight. He kind of tripped and fell. Um, you know, my, my, my role had really changed as I'd gotten older on this team. Uh, I don't ever really think I was the best or toughest fighter in Ottawa. I was more of a gamer, but I think it's kind of this like two, two paths sort of diverge for me. Like I think the league has gotten less tough. And I'd gotten older and a little bit stronger and a little bit better at fighting. So all of a sudden, next thing I knew, I was in this like heavyweight class. I was like, what am I doing? Like, so, um, <laughs> you know, I thought I'd squared up with Delorier a little bit earlier. And then it was just like a couple of shifts later, like I uh, just went in on a puck. Um, I think it kind of bobbled in the corner. So I'd sort of double clutch on it. And I think, I don't know who it was. Frost just rode me out face into the dasher. Yeah. Um, I was out, obviously came through with Kevin, our trainer, who's awesome. Um, my, my biggest concern was my son, Miles and Tara had been at the game. Um, and I was like, Oh no, like Miles just saw me go off the ice on a stretcher. But fortunately they had actually left. Um, okay. they just kind of came for warm ups and, and a little bit. So Tara dropped Miles off with a sitter, double back came right back and met, met, met me at the hospital. So, so it's you, I, I, how concerned were you or how scared were you? Or I guess just what's um, the emotion like? Yeah, I mean, I was emotional. I think guys who've had concussions will probably tell you that's kind of like usually a symptom. It's like heightened sort of emotions. Um, so a lot of tears between Tara and I, but I think that was more just because like deep down we were like, this is it, you know, like yeah. like we're, we're yeah. done. I'd had one last year um, as well, missed most of the year prior with, you know, lingering concussion symptoms. And I was just like, I think we both just knew deep down in our heart of hearts that this was, this was the end. So kind of comes at you quick, you know. Well, does, besides, uh, yeah, certainly. Does. Besides the uh, with the concussions, how how's your body in general though? Like, uh, Good. I knew, yeah. When, uh, yeah. yeah, I knew in my last year. Like, it's funny you said you kind of know when you're done. I knew, yeah. like, I'm like, I can't believe I'm still doing this. Like, and then you <laughs> yeah. just, I actually remember going into a game and I'm like thinking, holy shit, like, I shouldn't yeah. be going out there. Like, yeah. how how are you feeling in general though? Good. Like, I've actually been pretty fortunate. Like, I, I you know I've had some like shoulder injuries and I've had a lot of like you know, broken bones and stuff from like hits and fights and block shots. But I, I haven't really had a ton of like soft tissue injuries in my career. Um, I've never really had like groin injuries, hip is injuries. Like I had an MCL tear, but that healed quick. I've never really had like these lingering soft tissue injuries. So for the most part, I, I, I feel pretty good. Uh, definitely a lot stiffer in the mornings. <laughs> yeah. When I get out of bed, I'm like, oh my God, like what, like, what happened yeah. to me? Like, but uh, I think that's just because we got some miles on our bodies after playing the game for a while. But uh, no, like I still train, I still work out. 
Um, I'm going to get big into like, I really like like wrestling and grappling and stuff like that. So that's just a nice way for me to kind of competitive out without getting punched in the head and ruining what's left in my brain. So, uh, I'll get back into that big. Once we move back to Ottawa, that'll be a nice little outlet for me. I got a good crew, uh, who trains that. Uh, so yeah, generally aside from, you know, a few little lingering issues from, from from the concussions, I, I, I feel pretty good. That's what I, I was going to ask that too. And you know what, Yuki, you and I've never talked about this, but when I, like when I moved on, um, you, I think for 15 years for me, like you're, you're riding the wave of your training through whatever it is, you're playing through whatever it is. You just don't realize. And then you, and then you come down. Um, and for me, like it took, Boro, it took me six months of like waking up in the morning and not knowing I had these little injuries that were, cropping up and i'm like why is that bothering me well you did this for 15 years why is my groin tight like it it took me six months sure. to feel good again like actually yeah. good are you going I, through that I, at I, all you're I, I think you're bang on like now i'm actually starting to feel like oh like this is what like a normal human being feels like and like not having some <laughs> lingering thing that i'm like limping around with in the morning you know so yeah. um you're right like now I, I i so that happened early like i think was that i don't know all if you know the remember the date on that it was like october november like it was quite early this year october 22nd i just uh, yeah october 22nd i i took some time off after that and then i i you know i kind of got back into training thinking it might come back so like i've been able to sort of sit back for almost like what like almost like eight or nine months now so i'm starting to get to the point now where i'm like all right yeah like i I feel good i don't have any like aches and pains like no tendonitis or any bs like that so it's been nice to feel this way (laughs) That's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Don't stop borrow. Do whatever you do. Don't stop training. That's the biggest mistake I did. I stopped working out for yeah. about four, two, two, about four years, and like yeah. you start. That's when you start feeling it. But you've always been a big workout guy, though. I heard. Yeah. I, I heard you used to train, and then you used to go home and train again in your garage. Yeah, I, I, it's, you know, it's always been an outlet for me, and like I'll tie that in. Like I always say, talk about mental health a lot, but it's been an outlet for me, you know, like. uh anxieties and stuff like that just get in there and grind right it's the way for me to get that that negative en- energy out so um it's just a part of my life like obviously it's nice to scale it back a little bit now and sort of pick and choose based on how i'm feeling and the kids schedule and stuff but i pretty much go every other day or i go like two on one off uh, i got a good little setup here but yeah I've, I've i've grinded for most of my career it's kind of been ingrained in me and um, I tell people now, I just, I just train to be the biggest, toughest dad at the park. Now I just like to look at people and scare them a little bit. So I still got the crooked <laughs> you, nose. Yeah. Enough deep, so. You and I aren't going. To I got some street cred to keep up here. You know, come, on. <laughs> yeah. come down the, come down the Pinkerton. You'll be the second biggest guy in Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone butts in on my kid on the slide. I'm going right to their dad. They're getting put in the headlock. <laughs> <laughs> um, before I move on, the last thing about the injury and the ending of your career did you ever thought of trying to get back just to play one more game so that it, that that wasn't the way you had to leave the nhl yeah i i, I thought about it hard i was like uh, going out on my terms you know but then i i, I then i kind of reframed it i'm like you know i think i am going out on my terms a little bit because i'm choosing not to come back uh you know the medical staff here kind of said we you know we can make a case either way for you to never play again or for you to maybe try to come back and play again so the decision is ultimately up to you and i'm like well you know i'm pretty at peace with making my decision to not come back um so i think that helped and then also you know management here was awesome like uh when i when i told them i wasn't coming back right away they kind of transitioned me a little bit and gave me some jobs to do helping out with some young guys just sort of being a, a bit of a mentor here i was around the team a lot i'd go into the gym every morning try to just like talk to some of the young guys, uh, just do what I could to be a resource. And I think that helps that, you know, period of uncertainty a little bit too. Do they still have the boot by the way, in Nashville that you get after the game? No boot. No. Uh, I'm trying to think of what we had. It's been a while since I played Wally. Well, there, well, there's a, I didn't, I, I, didn't, I, I, I didn't win that hard hat very much at this. Stage of my career, so. They there's gave a it cowboy a boot times after like big fights, but uh, no, there was no boot. Yeah. When I went down to see fish, there's one in the the room. Anyway, that was like, I gotta. Yeah. Hey, I, before we, I know Wally got a bunch of stuff planned. Before we move on, yeah, yeah. though, Borrell, like I played in Nashville for a couple of years too. How how great is it to play there? By the way, Borrell, like it's tough to. It's awesome. People always ask, but probably my favorite spot. The people, the culture, the like. It's just yeah. such a great place. You must have loved it there. 
Yeah, like I, I, I'll be honest. Like I think you, you know, Bobby, we played together. I used to hate coming here and playing because that like first period, you were like, yeah. oh my god, like this place is nuts. Like, um, yeah. you know, it is a great rink to play in. People get fired up. They, they're like a little bit bloodthirsty. I think for people who hit and fight. So I had a lot of fans, which was kind of cool to see. I was like, oh, like, are people wearing my jersey in the stands? Like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> we got like Yossi Forsberg. I'm like, why are they wasted hundred bucks on my jersey? You know, like. Um, <laughs> So that's been sweet. The, the city has grown just like, and Bobby can speak to just like exponentially. Um, like Bobby, when we were first coming, like there was, there was two hotels. There was the Omni and the Sheraton, right? There was not yep. much. Yeah. You, you'd go down to Broadway. You'd do a quick tour. If you had a couple of nights off, you'd go grab a beer, um, whatever, maybe, but there wasn't really a whole lot going on, but now it's just like, it's nuts here. So the city's taken off. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a great place to come. It's a definitely a destination now. So, um, yeah, it, it really is an awesome place. I do enjoy Nashville. I, about the Jersey thing, though, I, I'll always remember this. And I, I should I apologize, I think, afterwards. So at Sens games, right in front of me would be two people always wearing like this Borowiecki's jerseys. And I'm like, it, they must be like family members or something. <laughs> so, so I'm like, this would be a good story. <laughs> so... So I go to Boro. I'm like, hey, Boro, there's there's two people up in 113 wearing these jerseys. Um, do you know them? He's like, Wally, people are allowed to buy my jersey. Yeah, I don't know where they geez. are. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's, a, that's an absolute backhanded slap by you, Eric. Should I just sign off now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not signing off. I'm just I'm just I'm just grabbing a pacifier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I do apologize. Um, oh. Let's get to Ottawa, shall we? Where you played uh, nine of your yeah. twelve seasons. Now, the one thing you talked about, you weren't a heavyweight fighter, but you you had a lot of tilts in your career. So I looked, the, I added them up because I thought we don't include playoff fights, we don't include preseason fights in the stats. So in the AHL, you had thirty-seven fights in one hundred and eighty-five games, which is basically one every five games. And then you also had a preseason fight, so that's 38. Then you had seven preseason NHL fights, 68 regular season fights, and 113 total pro fights. Um, at what? And I know at one point you said you needed to kind of maybe slow down on the fisticuffs, but like, how do you men- mentally prepare for that kind of career? It, it was tough early on. I think I was just trying to make a name for myself. But, you know, I think that's where I went down probably – the wrong path sometimes. I was like, I'm just going to fight everyone. doesn't matter if I match up well against them. I was never really like a huge guy. I was just kind of a gamer. Like I consider myself sort of a middleweight gamer. Oh, hang on. I got to say bye. Someone's going to school. Come here, buddy. You just come say hi. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you, you know, can we, see my we little could have done it at 10. Yeah. There he is. Hey, Miles. Miles, can you say bye? Bye. Okay. Ha- have a great have, day. Sweetie. Have a great day. See you, buddy. You, bud. Bye. Bye. <laughs> see ya. Um, yeah, that's Miles. <laughs> He likes having the same haircut as me. So, um, yeah. So, I, you know, I really struggled with that, I think, earlier in my career because I'd get into fight. I'd, I'd have fights lined up before the game, single lineup sheet, and I was like, I, I can't, I'm not going to beat this guy. I was 195 pounds, you know, back in the day when there was, there was like legit heavies in, in the NHL. You know, it's a little different now. Um, and then I also think just being in not a great place mentally. Um, I really wore that like as a bit of a burden. Um, but I think as I got older in my career, especially these past few years in Nashville, like, like last year, I, I not this past season, but the year prior, I, I think I had like 13 fights and I was like 11 and two and guys were like, Oh, you're a killer. And I'm like, I think I'm a bit of a wiener to be honest out there. Like I, you know, <laughs> punching bag for most of my career, but I, I just sort of figured it out. You know, I, I actually trained to fight a little bit. I, I hooked up with, um, there's six one three Fight Factory. They're out uh, off of Hunt Club. Uh, MMA guys trained with them a lot. I was, I think, in a much better place mentally, where I didn't view fighting as this like, you know, kill or be killed. It was just like, oh, just part of my job. I kind of enjoyed the technical aspect of it, and um, so I think I sort of like turned over a, a bit of a, a, a new new leaf here in Nashville, and, and was more at peace with that role, and was just more comfortable with it. So you fought. Tom Wilson, Marcus Foligno, Matt Martin, and Milan Lucic all three times. The most you've fought any one opponent. Is there any issues with any of those people? 
Uh, Felino, I, I did not, I, I, I got beat up by him last week. Crack me. His guy's arms are so long and he's like 230 pounds. Like, and it's funny because we're like almost buddies now, just like mutual respect. So in the box at one time, like, how many times have we fought? Like, cause I think we fought in the minors too. And I'm um, a guy I really respect Luch. Luch, I don't know why I kept fighting him, but I was just like, whatever. Like the, the one, uh, in Nashville last year, I'd been out there on the PK for like a minute, 10, just like cross checking him in the back. I was just like already exhausted, and then like I fought him, and after that, I'm like like toe to toe too. I'm like, why did I do that? Like that was so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like Dan- Danny Heino, like after our assistant coach was like, oh my god, like I thought you guys were gonna kill each other. I was like, oh my god, I narrowly survived that one. Um, uh, Tom Wilson, Tom Wilson, I fought a couple of times when I I wasn't, I shouldn't have been fighting him. I wasn't really ready. You know, he was like a legitimate heavy in the league, and I I wasn't, so those didn't go great. Uh, Actually, the one uh, the one last year, I'll tell you a funny story about this one. And all the hockeyfights.com people are probably going to be so mad at me for saying this. But uh, he had just come back from a concussion. He blew up Johansson in uh, Washington. And I was getting a reputation for myself as being one of the tougher guys in the league, I think, at that point. And I was like, Willie, like, we got to go, bud. And he was like, oh, I just came back. I was like, no, sorry, dude. Like, time to go. He was like, all right. Uh, he's like, let's just tie up and pretend to throw. I was like, all right, sweet. I get Tom Wilson on my fight card. I know get punched. So we literally just like skated to the corner and kind of like tied up and like threw a couple like air muffins and then uh, the ride came in. Like, great job. And I actually saw my like, people were like, what a terrible fight. Like I was expecting more. I was like, oh, if only you guys knew. <laughs> That's a great so good. I love that. Absolutely love that. <laughs> Is there anybody that you really – dislike that you didn't get a chance to tussle with Ooh, that's a tough one really disliked not really i mean you know when the guys are kind of on your circuit who, who you fight a lot like you, you kind of gain this mutual respect for them um yeah I, i'd have to go back and really think hard uh i got one well, for I, you. I, i've had like 10 concussions while my memory is not great on it anymore so uh I, and it just came to me brad marchand i i actually i have no issues with marcy i mean uh he clipped me that He's, one time yeah, you got. Oh like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Suspension. I remember that. Yeah, I had like a little grade one MCL after that. I mean, whatever. Um, I've actually heard really good things about him <laughs> off the ice, so uh, I don't really care about that too much. Um, I've I've never something. heard a bad word about Brad Marchand. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I I really like Chris Kells. I've got tons. Uh, Chris Kelly, I've got tons of respect for Kells. And he said good things. I mean, it goes to like Disney with Marshy. I'm like, Marshy can't be that bad if Kels is hanging out with him. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, like, there's not, like some of like the skilled rats I didn't really like, like that uh, David Perron was always a bit of a rat. You know, guys who ran. I out. fucking hate that guy, man. I hate that <laughs> yeah, guy. Yeah. Like, I'll be honest. Like, like, like Cla- yeah. yeah. Like, Claude Giroux ran his mouth a lot. There were some times where I'm like, all right, like, this guy's going to get it here soon. Like, uh, you, know, like you guys, you wonder. guys, you guys never crossed over with Matt Cook, did you? Did Matt Cook uh, bleed uh, into your guys' era? I did. Oh, yeah. No, I think really? I did. Yeah, I think I did a little bit. Oh, there's a rat yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. Just, 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 just guys like that. I mean, guys who like talk and don't back it up. Like, I kind of got to the point in my career. I'm like, why am I going to waste time talking? Like, let's just fight. You know, like it just <laughs> didn't really make sense. I think that happened. I'm trying to think who it was. Someone was like running their mouth at me, running their mouth at me. I was just I called him on it. I was like, let's fight opening face off. He was like in warm ups and he's like running with nothing. Like, uh, opening puck was like, well, let's go. And he's like, oh, no. <laughs> and it's like skate away. I'm like, why are we wasting time doing this? You know, like, like I'm too old. I got, I got two kids at home, another one on the way. Like, I'm not wasting my energy yelling at you. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Why did you fight Zidane Chara? So I just, again, I was just trying to make a name for myself. I've actually got some good Z stories. We've kind of befriended each other a little bit uh, over the years. We, we actually messaged quite a bit uh, on Instagram. Just someone that I really respected the way he aged in the league and, and like was still such a valuable player. I was like, you know, prior to like the injuries that did me in, I was like, man, like I would love to be like that guy where he just kept finding jobs, was still valuable. Um, and like I would always ask him to fight even after that one. And at one point, he looked at me in this like big Slovak accent. He's like, "You just can't help yourself, can you?" It's <laughs> <was> like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then so our first game at UBS, um, which was his last season at the new rink there, I'm like skating around in warm ups. You know, again, I'd been running around that year, and uh, someone 
comes over to me from my team and he's like, Hey, Z wants to talk to you. I was like, Oh God, well, wants to talk to me and warm up. It's like, he's going to want to fight me. So I'm like, like Z wants to talk to me. They're like, yeah, man. I'm like, all right. So I skid over the red and Z's standing there and I'm like looking up at him. And uh, here I am thinking he's going to ask me to go. And he's like, Hey, uh, can you sign a stick for me and send it over after the game? I was like looking around. And I was like, me? Like, you want one of my sticks? And he's like, yeah. Like I'm, he's like, I'm going to be done playing. I'm collecting. I'm like, you want my stick? And he's like laughing. He's like, yes. Like, I'm like, okay, man. So, wow, um, so yeah, me and Z have kind of got a good relationship now. Ah, I didn't yeah, see that one. So yeah. now do you collect or did you collect any memorabilia? Uh, no, I, I, I didn't really. Should I lie and say I've got a Bobby Ryan stick signed in my, uh, like over my bed? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've actually, I've got, I've got a couple in the bedroom for miles, um, from Nashville. I've got like a personalized hat from Roman Yossi, who's going to be, I think a hall of famer, you know, best Swiss player of all time. Then I've got a personalized hat uh, from Pekka Rene, who is just, I mean, amazing goalie, but even better human being. And so those are two that Phenomenal. I keep out there. Yeah. Phenomenal yeah. human being, that guy. So those are those are two that are special. And uh, Phil Phil Forsberg, who I'm, I have a really good relationship with, signed a stick for Miles as well. So I've just got a few little things like that for Miles. So he created a, a stir last summer being in Ottawa. Do you remember this? <laughs> yeah, I, so I he, can tell you the whole story, yeah. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Cause yeah, it was on. So people that don't know, it was on Instagram. Uh, Phil Forsberg just posted a picture of the city and then everybody's head blew up and said he was signing with Ottawa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I just, so funny. Like I pull up my, I have like a little Twitter that I just read the news. I'm like, I don't post or anything. And um, I see Forsberg trending in Ottawa. I was like, and I, I know I, he was, so he's coming to a wedding in Ottawa and they were just like in yeah. and out. Um, and he would always, you know, like needle me during the year. Cause I was like, Oh, Ottawa's the best city ever. Like I love living there. I'm moving back here to my career. And he's always like, he'd always say like downtown Ottawa doesn't exist. He'd be like, we just go to the, the Brooks street. He's like, I don't believe that downtown Ottawa actually exists. <laughs> so like we'd been going back and forth. And then he, I, he told me he was going to offer a wedding. And I was like, go downtown. So he finally went downtown. He took a picture of me and, was like it actually exists because I was like joking saying like yeah it's just a green screen that we like put parliament buildings on and it's like not real. Well then people see that he's in Ottawa and like all the Sens bloggers are like Phil Forsberg signing in Ottawa. And I was like boy he's like he's in Ottawa for like literally he could not have stayed for any less time for that wedding. Like he flew in the wedding flew out. <laughs> but so but he was like yeah it's actually like a really nice city. Like I was downtown in the summer. It's beautiful. I was like I told you like <laughs> So that's amazing um <laughs> last thing about fighting and because i meant to get to this earlier so we had eric griba on last week or the week before he's a good friend of yours obviously um, yeah. and I, I found a quote from him from the ahl and griba says i'm pretty sure he's fought people in practice sometimes in practice i would have to say holy shit boro i don't want to get hit today please don't hit me i'm sore we played last night. I just want to stretch the legs. I don't want to get freaking buried in practice. Um, was that you? I would hit in practice. I have never fought a teammate in practice. I came, I came close with Chris Neal one time. We were very close. And I think Bobby could probably attest this. Neither was the far more dangerous practice player than I was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not even close. Yeah. 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 I, like, I was going to say, I was had more fights in practice than Boro. Even yeah, I, who, yeah. I, I saw him fight someone. I think it was Neeler in practice. They came close one time. Remember? They were going, yeah. We were it was like two on two down low. And, and yeah. Neeler yeah. turns around and just like out of nowhere, Spears grabs like mash yeah. down right in the stomach. <laughs> and we're all like, Neeler, what are you doing? And he's like, he, he looks at us. He's like, Grabs pushed me. We're like, why you can't spear him? <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah. I actually remember that. I, and I remember yeah. like Grabs' face mask was down like. To hear, and he's skating away, and he's like, "What is wrong with that guy?" And he, yeah, he was just picking his gloves up and chewing on his stick. Yeah, I, I, I came, I came close with Neeler once, and I, I actually one guy I always had run-ins with, which is hilarious because we're good buddies still. Is Zach Smith? We would always go at each other, and then like yeah. two days later, we'd be like hugging it out in the gym, having a kumbaya. Like I don't know why it kept happening. Like I remember in Newfoundland one year for training camp, I just buried Ryan Dzingel in an inner squad game, and. And Smitty was so mad, like, oh, he's a young guy. And I was like, oh. I was like, Smitty, I'm a third pair defenseman. Like, I'm trying to make this team too, bro. Like, so, uh, it ended up going. Uh, Smitty, well, Smitty kind of gets away because he's so likable, but he was under exactly, yeah. yeah. He, he was, was a little like shit, 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 shit to start oh, he, in practice. 
Craig, Craig Anderson had no more hatred for anybody than Zach Smith in practice because the first <laughs> thrill of the day, Smitty was at the house. He'd hit him in the head. The tower. <laughs> yeah, every <laughs> single time. And he, and he had an he, undercover hard shot, too. Oh, my. Yeah, he did. And then on yeah. top of it, Smitty would be like, well, you signed up for it. You're getting paid to do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he'd go into the room and probably put on his, like, indie rock at, like, level 100 and right. just blast us all <laughs> out of there. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. He was a big <laughs> fan of Jock Jams. <laughs> Boro, you brought up Bor- Boro, you brought up Neeler. Bobby always says this, and I want to get. I I heard he was a huge drill buster. True or false? I, I I'd say true on that. And he and he had he like he insisted on being first, whether he knew the knew the drill or not. I mean, this guy <laughs> every is like, time he's like ultra competitive, and I think that's what made him so successful. Like he's yeah. just so yeah. like Yorkie in summer field house sessions. If we were doing a set of walking lunges for warm ups, he'd have to win. Like I'm talking just like just like Shortsy would be our strength coach for Shorts would be like, okay, like do these slowly. And you would be like buzzing down the thing and like laugh you and come back. Like, that's just the way he was wired. But I think that's what just made him so successful. He just it was always a competition. And that's probably why this yeah. guy was like probably pound for pound, one of the toughest guys ever in the NHL. Oh, yeah. I'd agree with that hundred percent. He's still that way. I, I believe that. I love that he coaches he's a men's league or he sorry, he coaches a bunch of High end junior CCHL kids, and he's on the ice with them, and he wants that drill. Like he will yeah. do the drill at the same time. Oh, full that's, speed all the time. I, I, I firmly believe that's why he was so successful in the league for so long because yeah. he's just so competitive. He will never quit. Yeah. He will never come in second. He has to win. Whether he's got to cheat to do it, whatever he has to do, he, <laughs> he has to win. <laughs> well, um, yeah, he's not. He's not above cheating. He was the most. He was awful at two touch, wasn't he? <laughs> but he cheat, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I want. Do, oh, by the way, do you know how many stitches you've had in your career? Have you kept track? Yeah, well, like I can, actually, I can't even get them above my eyes anymore because the skin's so thin, like uh, it just tears. So, uh, it's like when I've been having cuts in Nash, they'd have to start gluing them because I couldn't. Uh, there used to be that thing back, like uh, in New York State, for workers' comp. It was like a thousand bucks a stitch, but. You were like basically suing your team for workers' comp, right? So they'd always be yeah. Like, oh, you don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what Co- Cody Bass did that and it didn't go very well. Yeah, I don't uh, think the organization yeah. looked favorably upon no. that. So. Uh, your, which is more memorable, your first goal or your last goal? What was my last goal? I don't know. Your last goal was scored at. Toronto. Toronto, yeah. Far side sifter. Yeah. Um, yeah, with Drake Batherson and uh someone else on the assist. I can't remember now. Oh, Dylan. You know, the, the, the first goal was was is actually quite special to me. A, it's your first goal. B also that you know, I have the I've still got the picture in my gym just next door right here. Like the guys who are on the ice with me, and it's it's really fond memories for me to look back at that picture in the celebration because it's Bobby, Turi, Meth, and Clarkie. Um all four guys who, when I retired, were four of the first guys to reach out to me and say congrats. You know, that's uh, to me. I, I look back on those years in Ottawa with with that group we had through the years. Just so, I, I mean, it just means so much to me. It's so special. So to be able to look back on that picture in my gym and say, hey, not only is that my first goal, but it's these four guys who I did it with. That's it's guys who I'm still in contact with. That's pretty sweet. Nice. Do you know who got the puck? Bobby, there it is. What a guy! Bobby went yeah. and got the puck for you. Oh. <laughs> Number six, uh, boys. vintage Bobby. That's vintage. Yeah, yeah. one yeah. year. Yeah. Fans love yeah. it. So, <laughs> I d- by the way, Bobby, I did find uh, on the day that Borrow scores his first goal, Don Brennan was writing for the Ottawa Sun at the time. Had his little notes package. It says Senator fans must want to see Bobby Ryan finish his career here. Just watching him shoot the puck is worth the price of admission. Yeah, that was before all the broken hands. <laughs> no, <laughs> before, yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I had a I had a good first six months in Ottawa, but then... <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, I just I, wanted. I to... came back up for the playoff run, and that was the end of it, right? <laughs> Still scored more goals than me as a senator, Bobby. So you're good to go, but if that's, ah. a, if that's where we're setting the bar, I'm in trouble. Bar is that a <laughs> low bar? To that's like a little mini hurdle. Right? That's like a little four inch mini hurdle. Right. By the way. I, you scored se- a career high seven in your final yeah, year. Bobby, I had more goals than Thomas Shabbat that year. Settle down, bud. I was well. You know what though? 
I remember, I remember <laughs> thinking the last year we played together, I was like, this guy shoots from everywhere. That puck came around the wall, Boros feet it down the wall, and it went towards the net. And I was like, yeah. he must have drilled this all summer. <laughs> DJ, um, so my, my last year, DJ would talk to me about Brent Burns, and he's like, just shoot the puck. And, and I, I got seven that year, just ripping it. Yeah, no, it worked. It worked. But uh, I knew if the puck was going to Boro at the point, just start headed towards the net because <laughs> it wasn't going back down the wall. <laughs> uh, did, so my point is that year, did you think that you were going to end up signing a big deal to stay? Uh, that was, you know, so that year I, I <laughs> you know, I'm not going to go too much into details of how that whole thing went down. I mean, that's a conversation for behind closed doors, but um, it was amazing. You know, I think it was amazing. I, I, I think <laughs> <laughs> the date, Hold on, fill me in. Fill me in here. Oh man! No. <laughs> it, was ama- it was amazing to the, watch unfold in real time, though. Right, bro? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a, a nice political answer. The dates that we all thought a group of us thought we were going to be offered contracts kept getting pushed. Um, so I think I, I just started getting this chip on my shoulder where, where I was like, if I'm not going to sign here, like. I'm going to have the best year of my career and, and just really put the heat on Ottawa. And when it became clear that I probably, you know, that wasn't going to resign. And I, I big deal is very relative Wally to me. I, I, by no means did I ever think I was a top four defenseman. I was a third pairing no. defenseman who, who hit and fought, but a big deal relative to me and my family and what it meant to us to stay in Ottawa, you know, yeah, I guess you could say that if they had offered me two or three years at a half decent number, like for sure. But um, at the same time, I'd never played anywhere else in my career. You know, I thought maybe it was the right time to try something new and um, it ended up working out just so well. Like I, I, I'm just, I was so fortunate to be able to come to Nashville and meet the people I've met here and make the connections I've met here and, and grow my network the way I have. Like there are some amazing people who work in this organization um, who I consider friends now, you know, not just players, but, but, but people in management, coaches. Um, so I think in the end, it, it, as, as annoying and frustrating as it was during that season, um, it ended up working out for the best. Uh, the only thing I'll ask about that is, I remember you saying in around November, if I'm not mistaken, because I, Miles was about to be born, I believe. Yeah. And you said, yeah. if I'm not going to sign, I want to get traded early, and it never yeah. happened. Was, was that yeah. disappointing for you? Yeah, I, I mean, like, I just wanted some stability for my wife and 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 our child. I mean, we we we'd had like, I'll give you a bit of insight into us as a family. Like, we had a really hard time conceiving. We tried for five years, we couldn't do it. We did a round of IVF, and Tara got pregnant right away. I was like, so in my mind, I was like, what do I need to do, or what needs to happen to make this the most comfortable for Tara after everything she's done for me and my family? You know, that IVF process sucks. Like, eh, that is hard yeah. on women. You realize how tough women are going through that. Um, mm-hmm. So that was sort of my f- frame of mind, my mindset. Um, I was just like, if the ball is going to drop or if, if the shoe's going to drop here, like, do it early. So I'm not like all of a sudden Tara's, because Miles was born in January or in February, sorry. I'm like, if, you know, if, if this is going to happen, at least we've got a little bit of stability somewhere. So. So, did you get told anything, um, or is it just came and went? Kind the, of thing? the conversation ended up being, <clears throat> I, I don't, I, I don't want to trade you out of respect for Tara and your baby, but I, I had said to management, I was like, if it's the right thing for this organization to move me, I get it, uh, and he agreed, and and I said, let's just leave it at that. Um, whatever has to happen will happen, and. And then I, I never really heard back. And obviously I, I didn't get traded, which I was thankful for. I, I ended up being thankful for at that point. So did you believe you're, you're you would telling be me, a, oh, you're sorry, telling me communication wasn't great? <laughs> <laughs> I'll re, I'll reserve judgment on that. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. I'm trying to get away from it, uh, <laughs> uh, Boro. So oh, the only man. other thing is you were told you'd be a senator for life because of the nonsense that went on. Did you believe that that would happen? <laughs> Uh, I, I, you know, I, I was certainly hopeful. Like I am from Ottawa. I love Ottawa. My family's there. My friends are there. Like I, I, I had been hopeful to, to, to play out, play out my years there. Again, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't asking for a three by three or five by five or anything silly. So, uh, 
you know, it is what it is. It is a business. I think I've, I've come to realize that more as I've gotten older too. And I'm not going to begrudge anyone, players, management, anyone for doing what they think is right for the team or the organization. So it's just, I think sometimes in this whole, you know, world of like fandom and stuff, we just lose sight of the fact that like, you know, guys in the league do have families and other considerations and it can be really stressful for guys. Would yeah. you trade Alex to Brinkett? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> just, just, oh, just ignore that. Uh, oh. the, the Calder Cup team, uh, they say once you win a trophy, whatever it is, you stick together. Are you still pretty tight with those? I know, obviously, Zach Smith is there. Eric Griba is there. Um, yeah. There's a few others. But, yeah, are you still tight? So that, that was a little different for me because I'd come in on my ATO out of, out of college. So I wasn't really like a true part of that team from the beginning. Um, I think I played like 10 games at the end of the season and then 24 in playoffs. Um, so those guys who ended up staying in the organization after the ones that you mentioned, those were kind of like my guys. Um, some of the older guys were sort of like AHL vets. I think the league was definitely a little different back then, like a lot older. You know, Ryan Calder, Ryan Petulney, Jeff Kinraid you know, Corey Locke, a lot of older guys who just sort of went their separate ways after who I'd never really like formed a big relationship with from the get go. Cause I just, I wasn't yep. there all year grinding with these guys, you know, but, but that group like Robin Leonard, <clears throat> uh, Smitty, Eric Condra, even Casper's Doggerman's to an extent, Eric Kreiba, like Kreiba's my partner for a lot of it. Uh, Jared Cowan came in after like those guys who ended up staying in the organization after like, yeah, that, that, that group stayed pretty tight. It, it is fun to watch. Um, what's your, f do you have a favorite memory in Ottawa? Is there such a thing? Uh, I mean, that playoff series against uh, Montreal the year was pretty sweet. <laughs> uh, going into the Bell Center in, in Ottawa, like, that was awesome. Was that the line brawl you're talking, you're discussing? Uh, that no, that was the year prior. That was the year prior. But just the year, so that was like the, the Hamburglar run year where we made playoffs, I think, right? And right. got much ball in round one. Like, that's a pretty awesome experience. Yeah. 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 It's up there. So, did you like Paul McLean as your coach? He was your first NHL coach. <clears throat> uh, Paul was Paul was good to me. Um, I still remember sometimes when, like, I think Jason Smith was running the D. Gator was running the D at that point, I think. And, uh, like, there'd be some games where we had no energy. Like, this year, Paul on the bench, like, growling, like, put 74 out there. Like, tell me to go hit someone. So, like, he he, he, he <laughs> gave me he, he gave me a lot of opportunity, you know. Um, I, I, I could see how he, he may have rubbed guys the wrong way. I think he got a little gruff towards the end. But, uh, yeah. again, you know, not to be too political with – in these answers, but coaching, like, again, having a year to, to sit on the sidelines and watch this year and interact with coaches a little more and try to help out, like coaching in the NHL is hard. Like it is cutthroat. You're, you're truly, I think, you know, unfortunately sometimes hired, hired to be fired. Um, it is a lot of turnover. It's super cutthroat, super demanding. These guys put in long hours, especially now that video is kind of at this insane peak where we've got to watch, oh. you know, coaches are watching 10 hours of video a day, just going cross-eyed trying to, do what the next guy down the hallway is doing as well. Right. So um, I'll, I'll give some grace to coaches now where I probably wouldn't have earlier on in my career, not understanding the workload, but now I realize like this is, it's a tough job for these guys. Boro, you played for, you played for DJ too, right? I so, did. Yeah. My last year, that was, that was my best year. Yeah. How'd you like playing for DJ? I, I, I love DJ. Um, I had a real personal connection with him. Um, actually, uh, the two, the two very first people who texted me when I got this injury, this career ender, uh, not, number one text was DJ. Um, wow. Like two minutes after it happened, number two text was Delorier, the guy I fought earlier on Philly. Um, DJ is someone I still talk to. Um, I think he relates to his players really well. He connects with his players. Big commanding yeah. personality. commands a room well. You know, you're never in question of who's in command of the room um, when he's around. I, I, I really enjoyed playing. For him, that was a regret of mine not being able to play for him more. Um, but again, that's just uh, the nature of the business. But, uh, you know, I was really happy for him. I know he's taken some heat and gotten a bit of a raw deal here over the years in Ottawa, given the, the state of the franchise and the team. But uh, I really believe in DJ. I love DJ. Uh, he's a personal friend of mine. And I, I was super pumped to see him have success over in uh, Latvia and Finland, too, at the, at the World Championships. Yeah, yeah, it's so, it's it's, yeah. Up, it's something unless you're behind closed doors, and Bobby's talked about him too. It's it's like coaching. It's about personal connections and connecting with yeah. guys, right? DJ played a similar game to you, by the way, Borrow. I, I know, and, like, and, and you're younger like, than five. me, but he was tough. 
He was tough. I'm, I'm, I'm glad yeah. you bring that up, Yorkie, because that was he was one of the guys. He said, beginning of the year, he sat me down in, in the office, made a personal connection with me. He told me he was like, I had to retire because of fighting. He's like, this is a contract year for you. He's like, I don't want you to focus on fighting. I want you to focus on being the best player you can be. And I don't think it's any coincidence that, that I had seven goals that year. And that was my best year statistically because he was one – he was a person who who gave me some personal support and made me believe in myself a little more as a player, not just as like a hitter and fighter. Um, so I, I, I'm forever grateful to DJ for that. He talked to me a lot about mental health. Um, he was just a, a really good person for me to be around. Nice. So, because there's a lot, as you know, Boro, there's a lot of chatter about DJ Smith and what should happen. I have no idea if he can coach, and you guys can comment on that. I, But it seems to me that players – will go through a wall for him and Bobby you you play with him as well like how much does that factor in maybe does he just need some new voices with him behind the bench in order to be super successful well like, I, I think that's part of it but I, I liked what Boro said too because you have what, what I like about DJ and I think every ho- head coach has to have this is that you have to have no question about who's in charge of the room when they walk into the room and DJ has that and those guys listen um, through the ups and the downs. I don't think there's ever been a game where I've said those guys are quitting on their coach. And that's, that's the biggest part of it. And Yorkie said this, that the head coach's job is really only to motivate. That's it. The X's and O's fall to the next guy. So I don't know where those, you know, those chips fall as, as far as the support staff and coaching staff, but DJ has the respect of the room. Um, and, and guys will go through a wall for him. I, I firmly believe that. Your captain doesn't stand in front of the room and say that if he doesn't mean it. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's always the X factor. I think I think everyone has systems, and they all work. It's just a matter of getting guys to buy in. I, I, I really believe that. And, 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 I, and I think it's easy to lose sight of the fact in Ottawa that is still a very young, very inexperienced group. They have not mm-hmm. played – meaningful hockey and these two guys can speak to it playing uh, uh, 10 game stretches where you're not really in contention or or you're even trying to you know you're pushing to make playoffs you're the underdog there's no real pressure on you versus getting into situations where it's high stakes hockey where there are expectations and pressure on you those are that's almost a completely different sport you know um yeah and 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 i think there's got to be a bit of grace for dj in that regard too that group still needs to grow and learn and kind of mature together uh, Boro, you, you got you guys just hit on something too. Just a, another thing on DJ and coaching. I, I played for Trotsy, and you you probably know Barry Trotz now being in Nashville. Boro, yeah, he had this thing, and and he's coach of the year, Stanley Cup. Probably not the greatest technical coach I ever played for, but man, we you know what it was with him. We just didn't want to let the guy down because yeah. we all played long enough, and I like to call. We can all sniff out an imposter. You know when a guy cares more about himself than the players and that's what happens when coaches as soon as we realize that you don't want to play for that guy anymore but i bobby i, I agree 100 a, a coach it's just all, you know when a guy's got your back and and when you know a guy's got your back you will go through a wall for that guy and to me that's what makes a great coach yeah yeah uh, completely, completely sorry agree. sorry bobby go go ahead bobby. no go 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 for it man you're the guest uh, uh, so yeah. I, I, I I think you couldn't have said it any better, Yorkie. Like you're standing in front of a room of, of 20 guys daily. If you're a phony, like you get sniffed out immediately. Yeah. Like it's just you're you as a coach, you were being evaluated by 20 NHL players. And a lot of older guys who've been through a lot and seen a lot will just call you on it and just not care. You know, so I, I am just such and, and I've had a chance to talk to Trotsy, you know, for a while. I've been so impressed with with how he handles himself and, and how he relates to people and cares about people. That's one thing everyone's told me. He's a family man. He cares about, he's a, he wants to surround himself with good people. He is a good person. Like that's what I care about as a player. I don't care if we're doing a one, three, one, uh, if we're doing a, you know, a two, three, a three, two, whatever. I, I, I really don't care. Like I think they all work. It's just a matter of getting guys to do them. hundred percent. I want to quickly ask you about a couple of players that are former teammates of yours. I have Thomas Shabbat, defenseman, as you know, takes a lot of heat in Ottawa. Um, as an outside voice now, can you tell us what the NHL perception of players is of Thomas Shabbat? Well, I mean, his skill is just absolutely off the charts, right? I mean, uh, the way he covers ice, skates efficiently. Um, you know, he looks effortless out there when he's on his game. And again, I think, I think what you see with him is just – 
a product of that group. They haven't been in situations where they have to play meaningful hockey. And I think when you get into those situations, just your your decision making naturally has to change. That's just the way it is. And and I I, I have nothing but belief in him. Um, I just really think that that group as a whole needs to get into those situations, and then individually, all those players will 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 benefit from that. And and I I just really don't think that saying like you know we want to contend in March to push for playoff spots. That to me, that's not really meaningful hockey. You know, meaningful hockey is grabbing a playoff spot come Christmas and hanging on to that the rest of the year and, and, and marching your way into playoffs. That's where these guys are going to grow. Okay, Brady Kachuk, what is his reputation outside of Ottawa? Uh, I, you know, like those young guys there have a good reputation um, from the people I talk to, like just the way they play, the way they work. Like anytime you've got a guy like Brady who can combine – you know, his, his natural finishing and skill ability with, with playing a hard, heavy game. Like guys have respect for guys who want to go to dirty areas and, and guys who go park themselves in front of the net. So Brady's certainly yeah. got that respect. Uh, I, I mean, like, I, I think you'd be crazy to not want him on your team. Is he yeah. is, like, would he be someone you want to see in the corner or not see in the corner? <laughs> Well, uh, personally, I preferred playing guys against guys like that because I was like, I'd rather play against a big guy who tried to go through me because I was like, all right, like, bring it on. Like, you're not stronger than me. Versus like a little guy who's trying to spin off me and put me in a blender, you know. Then I'm like, oh my god, like I can't keep up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're asking, you're asking, the, you're asking the wrong guy. Of course, he wants yeah, to like, make the check well, in like, the corner. Like, all those are the matchups that the, like coaches would give me, right? Like I, I would take the workload off your top four D because I would just get the third and fourth lines who were like heavy straight lines trying to play through you because like I'd be like, sweet, yeah. let's do it, you know. And that's and that's why that's why you need guys like Boro playing in that role. We talked about this the other day. Like you can't have you can't have small guys playing in your in your in your in your five six slot. You can't. Yeah. You can't. Yeah, it just it just takes it just takes some wear and tear off your top four. And that's what they told me when when I signed in Nashville. They're like, you know, our left side's Yossi and Echo. We don't really want them getting run over. We don't want them getting hit with slap shots all the time. We don't want them, you know, getting bullied. Like that's where you just bring a guy in, you know, a guy who's a side of beef and you just slot him in and he, and he takes up that sort of like workload right so side yeah. of beef <laughs> <laughs> i like how you put that in terms there yeah, just nice <laughs> get that slab in there i just have so a good. couple I, questions I'm certainly for not it. not like a dry age steak yorkie like i am uh, just a straight up side of old you're ribeye what are you borrow you're like a nice big ri ribeye uh, just something that's been on, on pasture its whole life and is real tough. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds perfect. Uh, well done. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The uh, so when I think like Brady Kachuk had a fight at Madison Square Garden with Jacob Truba, and you know it was one of the career highlights. Has there been any moment like that for you in your life, in your career? Uh, big career highlight? I, I don't know, man. Uh, Probably more like big hits, I think. Uh, like, I remember when I was younger, it ended up being a major, which was the wrong call, but like big hit on Jared Bull against uh, – that was sort of like a, a coming into the league moment for me. Like, I just absolutely crushed him. Um, you know, I was a call-up at that point, too. The team was kind of lifeless, and I think people were like, wow, this guy from the, from the minors can do this for a group. That was sort of a big moment for me. Uh, just like kind of things like that that were sort of coming into my own. And then I think I actually – I had one in Nashville uh, the year prior where I, it was my first game back from a concussion. Um, and the central that year was like meaty, you know, like teams were low. Like we, we led the league in majors by like 30 clear of like the second team. Minnesota went out, picked up like Middleton, DeLaurier um, team. It, it was like, it was like kind of an arms race, you know, teams were like, all right, like we want to survive this meat grinder. Like we got to load up here. So uh, I missed a couple of games with a concussion, came back. It was our first game against Minnesota. They had Felino, Middleton, uh, Duhame, Delorier. Um, my first two shifts of the game, first period back from a concussion, I fought Felino and Delorier back to back. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> like the one against Felino, you know, he cracked me pretty good. I had a big goose under my eye. And then the one against Delorier, I did pretty well. <laughs> Split him open pretty good. Like he's like pound for pound, probably the toughest guy in the league right now. Um, and like the, like the guys on my team were just going nuts. Like they were like <laughs> going crazy. And that was, I think like a welcome to national moment for me where the guys on my team were like, all right, like this guy will do anything for us. So, you know, I kind of get like a little bit of chills just talking about it, but I think that really cemented myself in the room in Nashville. So, uh, that the guy that, that got called up, 
uh, who spent four years at the Sens development camp and then nobody knew how to pronounce his name, uh, certainly made a career uh, without question. And so, uh, by the way, we did a Sens spend spelling bee and neither Yorkie or Bobby spelled your name right. Uh, we all we, we butchered it. <laughs> whoa, 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 no, we haven't right done Boro Wiki. Wait, whoa, whoa. We haven't done Boro Wiki yet. Yeah, we yes. did. We did it. We did it. <laughs> We yeah, both I mean, he's butchered not even pronouncing it right, Wally. So uh, <laughs> I, mean, like, I think you need to disqualify it immediately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bobby, I, I, how do I spell Ryan second, again? Is, is it W R Y A N? Oh, boy. Uh, hey, Bobby, I'll do it right. How do you? B O R O W I E C K I. No. That's impressive. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. How, Nailed do you, it. how do you say his last name? Borbiecki. <laughs> I don't know. Close. Um, <laughs> uh, sure, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, quickly, uh, do you agree with having to fight after a clean hit? Ah, uh, no. Like I, I, I don't think so. Uh, that's where I, that's where I question the instigator rule a little, a little bit. And I think there there could be some a bit of a change to the game where I think, um. Anytime there's a big hit and a fight is initiated, if the if the hit leading up to it is ruled clean, there's no penalty, whether it's right away or after review, I think it should be an auto instigator for the guy on the other team who, who started the fight. If if the hit is dirty, if it's a major or anything, then I think if the guy instigated the fight, he should not get an instigator penalty. Does that make sense? I know it's a very con- yep. convoluted yeah. way to say it, but no, I no, think that, if it ends up being ruled that the hit is clean, I think there should be like almost an auto instigator for the guy who runs in and starts that fight. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Um, before we let you go, uh, my last question anyway is, do you have any fears? You're a big, tough guy. I want to know if you've got any fears. Uh, I don't like heights. Uh, I'm not a big fan of heights. A little bit claustrophobic. Um, I'm really not like a top guy. Like I'm like such a suburban dad. Like I'm probably going to be driving a Subaru around with like a kayak on top here soon. So um, <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, heights, heights. I certainly don't like that. I'll, I'll say heights. Ah, oh, okay. Um, during your career, uh, for people that don't know, you uh, were sixth in the league uh, from 2014 to 2022, basically in hits uh, Matt Martin, Ryan Reeves, Radko Gudis, Kyle Clutterbuck, Milan Lucic, Mark Borowiecki, Tom Wilson, Marcus Foligno. Uh, it's a pretty good group. Uh, pretty good company, yeah. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. A hell of a player. Uh, we enjoyed every yeah. bit of it. I, um, let me so, say, I don't think Matt Martin and Kyle Clutterbuck should count because if you look at someone in Long Island's rank, they give you a hit. So it's, <laughs> oh, it's amazing. It's yeah. So true. Yeah. Matt, I, Matt, so Matt, Matt Martin would come out of warm-ups with five on his on his stats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, sa- I saved a couple score sheets because I had four hitters down there. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> there's, there's a couple of drinks that I had, like Chicago's another one. Like after the game, I'd be like, oh my God, double-digit hits like every game. Like, you know, like, so I don't think the Long Island guys should count because they just literally, you, you blow in on a guy he's skating by and they're like, oh, that's a hit. Uh- so, okay, I'll make it even better for you. Between 2014-15, 21-22, Mark Borvieski led the league in hits per game. Sweet, there thank is. you. There we go. Matt Martin was Thanks. second. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Boro, uh, enjoy some time off, downtime, uh, and getting back to Ottawa and getting into the new house. So uh, we appreciate yeah. it. I appreciate it. Thanks, Boro. Oh, guys, I love catching up with you guys today, guys. I really enjoyed always, you know, being around and talking to in Ottawa. So I'm looking forward to coming back and being a part of the community a little more. And uh, yeah, we're pumped. So it should be sometime in August. So I appreciate you guys' time. Again, apologies for, for being hard to pin down. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, all good. Uh, all right. Take all care, buddies. my friend. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Borough. There goes Mark Borowiecki, uh, one of the, my favorite people of all time. If there was a top five group of interview people or people that were just good to deal with uh he's in my top five sends of all time yeah did i make it great human yes yeah you yeah you meth boro spezza uh probably alfie would be top okay. five for me i like that so, yeah I guess uh, I, don't count. I guess i don't count eh? like i don't count you weren't there long enough yorkie you're at the beginning of my career I was too busy yeah. dealing with Alex Degg, Vinny Prospel trade. You were a cub reporter back then? I was Brent a cub reporter. cub reporter. Trying to get 
trying to get Stan Netscash to talk. <laughs> um, Do I get to go back we go, to bed now? All right, before nope, we go. go. Yeah. Uh, I, meant, oh, I meant to bring this up with Boro. The hit on Jack Eichel from Matthew Kachuk. Yeah, great, great hit. Great hit. Great great hit. hit. Wow. Um, and even <clears throat> Eichel afterwards, I don't know if you saw the interview, said, absolutely clean hit. I yeah. just toe-picked. Um, yeah. He said, thanks to the boys for sticking up for me, which is what made me think of the asking Boro about the hit question, and I totally forgot to ask about that. Jack great, Eichel. great, great hit. Nothing wrong with it. Eichel, come back. Should be in the Con yeah. Smythe conversation, Jack Eichel, but let's not start a new conversation. Yeah. So, no. uh, my Bob only question guys, is... Bob needs to get to bed. <laughs> can, I know, can, man. I'm dying. Like, I'm actually physically hurting right now. <laughs> so it's a, listen, I'm, you're not going to get employee of the week. If, okay. If you, right. if you can't hang on for five minutes, you're not going to get employee of the week. My eyes are watering. <laughs> I, so, <laughs> okay. La, can the Florida Panthers come back from down 2 nothing and make this a series? And can they even come close to winning the cup now? Not a chance. Vegas is too deep. They're too good. They're, they're running yeah. on all cylinders. They've got uh, their, their defense. They're too big. They're too long. And they're four lines deep. They're four lines deep. And Aiden Hill is, is in the zone right now. I think, I think they might win a game in, they might win a game in Florida, yeah. but I, I think, I think Vegas, Vegas They'll is still one thing. Yeah. They'll still one, but Vegas in five for sure. It's not even close. The, 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 you can feel that you can see the ice tilt all game long. Yeah. Yeah. I still think there's a chance. Only if Bobrovsky stands on his head, though. Florida's Florida's D aren't deep enough. They got exposed last game as, as soon as Gudas was injured, and and they're just they're not as deep. They're not as deep. Um, and, and Vegas is just it's like a conveyor belt of four lines that just keep yeah. rolling and coming, and they never turn the puck over. Like they're just methodical. Yeah. They're they just don't even very, have to worry about matchups. They're so deep. It's, it's, it's not even yeah. It's not even close. Great, Great team, well coached, and they're getting goaltending. I don't see how this thing comes off the rails for them. No. Nope. So we'll we'll trade Alex DeBrinket for William Carlson, and then the well, he's too be... old. Carlson's too old right now. But that's the type of that's that's the type of player I would be. That's the type of player Ottawa don't needs. Don't do it, Yorkie. I thought we were done. Don't start. A new <laughs> that's it. I know. Bob, Bob, Bob's like, Bobby's don't start. Uh, I got a tea time uh, too. I got golf at eleven. Okay. We got to get we'll wrap it up. All right. Let's go. Uh, we'll be back next week so enjoy your weekend uh stay safe in ottawa for all those people and uh bobby try to get some sleep all right i'm going see right you, back see you, <laughs> see you, boys. See you boys. coming in hot is brought to you by botano.ca please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to never miss an episode